Taking a look up lately? Could be something's looking down. In fact, the skies over Canada are getting a bit crowded these days with some zippy little machines that are essentially flying eyes. Unmanned aerial vehicles, drones. For some, they're the cool new hobby. For others, UAVs are flying tools with all kinds of potential. But as the CBC's Chris Brown discovered, Canada's regulations haven't kept up with what goes up. A new age of unmanned flight is starting to soar. I'll tell you, um, the last six months has just been totally phenomenal. The things that, that are happening are, are going to change the way we think and the way we live. Now anyone can be a pilot and shoot incredible video. I'm loving it. It's, a, it's like a dream come true. Like all this technology certainly didn't exist uh, six or seven years ago. But in this aerial free-for-all, who's to say what might come crashing down and what might be underneath? When it comes to unmanned aerial vehicles, it seems the sky really is the limit. In many cases, they're way cheaper than a helicopter, and we're only just learning all the things they can be used for. Plus, for many people, there's an undeniable cool factor. Still. Having a sky full of cameras could also be a nuisance. Another term with a more hostile connotation for these unmanned craft is, of course, drones. First pioneered by the U.S. military, the same technology is now usable by anyone. My name is Noel Rubin, and uh, I am a uh, helicopter and drone uh, enthusiast. And this is my custom drone, which uh, I've built, and I absolutely enjoy flying this thing. My name is Emil de Guzman. Um, what I have here is a DJI Phantom, the version one. Um, so this is capable of uh, bringing a GoPro 3 uh, on top in the sky, so you can get a bird's, uh, unique bird's eye perspective. Noel Rubin constructed his drone from a specialty kit he bought online. Total cost, $2,000. There's actually a little mini computer, which is each, each one of these things that controls the, each motor. It has GPS and there's also a compass in here so it can navigate very well. It's almost like the computer's flying this, but you're telling it where to go. I can park it in the sky. If I let go of the controls, it's literally, literally like putting a parking brake on. And uh, in the event of like if my radio conks out, or anything like that, it's programmed to return to where it landed. Emil de Guzman's machine is one of the more popular retail models out there. Together, you can get the machine and the GoPro camera for roughly one grand. So this is connected to the GoPro 3. So um, when I'm flying, I can see where I'm flying. I use this uh, purely for recreational uses. Uh, um, every time I fly this, people always come to me and they ask me, where did you get this? Did you make this? Canadian law treats people flying for fun and those flying for commercial purposes very differently. Since uh, this is a model aircraft, it, um, I don't necessarily need, an, uh, need a permit for this. As long as it's under 35 kilograms or roughly 70 pounds and you're flying for fun, it's a model aircraft. You have to maintain line of sight and it can't get too close to congested or built up areas or restricted airspace like an airport but otherwise, hobbyists are good to fly. What Jeff Nye has, on the other hand, is very definitely a drone. He's flying for business, and here, showing the incredible opportunities for a field like search and rescue. We can really get into some tight spots where a full scale, and even a, a, a walking search and rescue person won't be able to necessarily go put on these glasses and it's like everything the little camera in front of the craft sees is beamed straight into your brain. So go go up and down or do something, uh, whoa, not that. Oh, I think I'm gonna be nauseous. <laughs> it's as if you're flying over the forest yourself. We even have the ability to put cameras on it that are on a servo and so if I move my head to the left and right and up and down, 
the camera will show me that view so I have peripheral that I can look around in as well. Paul Bauer and Jeff Howe founded Guardian UAVs and they say they're still discovering all of the commercial uses for drones. I'll tell you, um, the last six months has just been totally phenomenal. Earlier this month, they were contracted by the Yukon government to inspect a bridge over the frozen Ross River with an eye for whether it should be saved or demolished. Obviously, you could argue that you could get a helicopter to do the same thing. It would probably blow the bridge away. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot different. Uh, it's a lot less impact, uh, zero emissions. The noise is, a lot, is reduced as well. And the quality of video, I mean, it speaks for itself. The team is also starting to work with fire departments. Imagine this building is ablaze. A drone could drop sensors inside to help crews determine how structurally sound it is for firefighters to go inside. And the commercial uses of flying cameras for media outlets are endless. This drone shot video of the destruction following the Philippines typhoon couldn't have been obtained any other way. So it's a, it's a very exciting time, uh, being able to be just right at the kind of the start of this and then seeing that actually build into something. Canada is far ahead of many other places when it comes to commercializing drones, including the United States. So far, the FAA has only allowed governments or their agencies to use drones, but here in Canada, almost any business can apply for a permit from Transport Canada. In 2011, the department issued 155 such flight certificates. Last year, 945, a six-fold increase. And those watching the industry expect exponential growth this year. The technology at this point is sort of surpassing the regulation. It's, it's moving at a pace that has significantly outpaced uh, the legislative ability to keep up to it. Lee Morrow is an aviation lawyer. He worries with hobbyists, commercial flyers, and aircraft all airborne. The airspace is going to get very crowded. Aircraft are tested for bird strikes on a regular basis, and our aviation industry is, is heavily regulated and is quite safe. But they're not tested for a 75-pound carbon fiber drone flying into the engine or the windscreen. I think that is a, a real safety issue, and, and, it's, and we're seeing it now. Canada's Transportation Safety Board is already investigating this way too close drone shot video of a jet landing in Vancouver. In another even more worrisome incident, an Air Canada pilot claims a drone got to within 50 meters of his landing aircraft. We are the only ones doing development. So how to keep the skies safe is now the big challenge for drone developers like Afzil Suleiman of the University of Victoria. The fundamental question we have to ask is that how do we make these drone, I mean, uh, UAVs um, fly like hundreds of them at the same time in an airspace? At his lab at Victoria's airport, they focus on fixed wing drones, which have a much longer endurance than helicopters. Very soon, says Suleiman, the onboard robotics will be smart enough to know whether another aircraft is out there and avoid it. I would say within the next five to ten years, uh, we will, we, I, my projection is that we, are, we, are, we can be uh, there with sense and avoid technology. But if technology can deal with some of the safety issues, Suleiman says other issues like privacy and what drones are used for are perhaps harder things to agree on. Is it invasive, do you think, to have something like this? flying in the air overhead for 10 hours? I mean, it depends, it, de of it depends on what it's doing. I mean, if it's, if it's uh, searching and rescuing someone that's lost at sea, yeah, it's worth the price. Now, if it's being used so that I can go and take pictures of where I'm not supposed to be, then it's not. The RCMP and other police forces are already using drones to gather evidence at crime scenes, for example. Few might complain about that. But what if authorities were to use a drone to, say, peer into someone's window? That may or may not require a search warrant. And there are no such constraints on hobby users. Indeed, some critics believe the distinction Transport Canada makes between hobby users and commercial operators is outdated. A quadcopter isn't really a model of anything. It, it is its own thing. And that's not described in, in the legislation at all. I think it only makes sense to have some sort of licensing with respect to the pilots of these aircraft. 
Uh, we, we license drivers, we're moving towards licensing boat operators. Uh, these create a, a safety concern for the public and I think it, it makes sense to license them. Do you think there should be more regulations to control even the hobby use of these sorts of things? I wouldn't mind even seeing like maybe it's like getting a, a license or something that that people are certified that they know what they're doing because there's a lot of science in this and there's a lot of expertise. This isn't a toy. The drones are watching us, but who is watching the drones? After all, accidents happen. It actually went uh, out of signal once. I was flying at the beach and then it just, thankfully it crashed over the tree. I got an email from a safety uh, um, aviation inspector. Um, he, he referenced some of my videos on YouTube and he was telling me how I, I, I flew in busy and crowded areas. He was giving me a warning, just telling me that I should be more careful in uh, the places that I'm flying. Imagine a sky, though, filled not with dozens or hundreds of unmanned flying vehicles, but thousands. UAV technology is getting crazy small. What is this? This is my little baby drone, which is just pure fun. This is a toy. And what does it do? Uh, it just hovers around. You can fly it indoors if you're careful, but it's just pure fun. It cannot call the camera or anything. It's just for fun. And in the lab, the next generation of UAVs, micro aerial vehicles or MAVs, are as small as insects and being built to do similar jobs, such as pollinating crops. The coordination of these thousands of uh, MAVs, it's a big challenge, but it is doable. Existing Canadian legislation certainly doesn't contemplate anything like a swarm of insect drones. But increasingly, unmanned aerial vehicles are taking over Canada's airspace faster than we can figure out how to keep up with them. Chris Brown, CBC News, Vancouver.